Hello everyone, very good evening to you on this Thursday. Here's our Bible and prayer for this evening. We are continuing to read through the book of Acts. We're in chapter 2 and we're going to begin at verse 36 this evening for the next part of Peter's speech on the day of Pentecost. Let me read that for us. Peter continues, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Well, I guess the response here would be the dream of any communicator, uh, to connect with their hearers in such a way as to move the mind and the emotions that change is both well obvious and inevitable and that is what happened when peter spoke to the crowd at pentecost whatever he'd thought whatever he'd hoped to achieve through his preaching that day that even he would have been astonished at the result of what he says three thousand new believers added to their number a baptism ceremony that must have taken absolutely hours as the gospel connects with uh, people and lives are changed as a result. Uh, and here's the clue to the astonishing success. It's not about Peter and his words. Uh, the drama unfolds in two stages. Uh, there's a moment of realisation as the crowd understand for the first time who Jesus is, followed up by a moment of response cut to the heart the people ask don't they uh, peter and the others uh, brothers what shall we do and so what is it that they've come to realize well as peter expounds the scriptures as he connects king jesus to king david back in the old testament they can suddenly see that jesus really is god's raised to life messiah and whilst david lay dead in the grave that Jesus was raised on the third day as God's forever king, ruling and reigning, Lord and Christ forever. And they have come to realise that for the first time. Uh, those words from verse 36. Uh, Let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. That's a realisation. They hear Peter and they believe what he's telling them. They are convicted in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now we can see that Jesus was the Messiah, God's only chosen king. And yeah, that's not a truth. Uh, they can just sort of set aside and sort of leave, uh, leave it be and walk away from it. No, it's a truth that changes things. It's a truth that changes lives and futures. It demands a response. And indeed, uh, they ask how they should respond. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the others, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. All of a sudden, the gospel makes sense. Here is forgiveness of sins for those who come to Jesus in faith. And so what should they do? Well, repent of your sins. Come back to God, return to the Lord, accept this Jesus as your saviour and your king and then be baptised as a sign that you've begun a new life in him. See, this is realisation that leads to a response as the good news is preached, as people's lives are changed. And it is the Holy Spirit that is at work uh, bringing Peter's words to the hearts of people that they might be convicted of that sin and turn to Jesus in repentance and in faith. This is God's message of salvation, a message of salvation even for today, uh, connecting with hearers in such a way 
uh, that their hearts and minds are moved uh, and change becomes inevitable uh, as the Holy Spirit gets to work. Well, let's pray in our own day uh, for that same Holy Spirit power to be at work amongst us in our lives and in the lives of all those that we know. Let me pray. Loving Father, we thank you for Peter's speech on the day of Pentecost. Thank you for the way that uh, the Holy Spirit power moved people to respond. Uh, thank you that they came to that realisation of who Jesus was and they wanted to respond in a way which uh, would uh, be pleasing to you. And so we thank you for that incredible response that day as the gospel was preached and proclaimed. And we pray for gospel ministry in our own day. And may we uh, know that same uh, sense of you being with us, of you taking our own words and making them uh, your words in the power of the Spirit, that others may come to realise for themselves who this Jesus is and respond rightly in his name. And so we thank you for tonight. Please bless us and keep us and watch over us, we pray, until uh, we meet once again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be back with more Bible and prayer tomorrow. Uh, until then, bye-bye for now.